Hi everyone, welcome to another video in my channel and this is going to be uh, an extended version of the talk I just gave at the APS March meeting um, which started today actually and for those who don't know the APS March meeting is the largest physics conference in the world it, it essentially focuses on condensed matter uh, physics and but also branches out to, to related areas and essentially attracts perhaps 10,000 or more attendees every year. So it's a big conference. And this year has been done completely online. So we all gave talks by Zoom and went into, you know, these breakout rooms to discuss. So it was a, uh, a different experience. So, and I gave the talk, this talk called Enhanced Majorana Bound States and Magnetic Chains on Superconducting Topological Insulator Edges, which is a result from the work of my PhD student, Rafael Teixeira, who was doing, uh, during his master's, he spent some time in, in Sweden, working with Professor Annika black at uh, Uppsala University. And there, we, he, he produced some, some nice results that turned out to be published in this paper in, in FISREF B uh, last year. And it was also done in collaboration with Dusko Kuzmanovsky, who is now at Nordita in Stockholm. So uh, here are the, the sponsors, people who actually made this, uh, the organizations who actually made this, this uh, work possible. And the idea here is that I'm going to give a slightly longer version of the talk that I gave at the March meeting. You, as you may know, talks there are typically typically um, set to 10 minutes plus two of questions, so I'll try to spend a little bit more, but essentially we'll use the same slides. Maybe I'm adding one or two. All right, so uh, this is not an introductory topic. Sometimes, perhaps in the future, I'll do more videos on my own bound states and try to be more didactical on, on this. So this is a more, you know, is a conference presentation. So the target uh, audience is for colleagues, postdocs, professors, graduate students, and so on, working on, on related topics. All right, so let's go right into it. Okay, so I'm going to start with a couple of slides that I didn't show the presentation. Essentially it was a motivation for Majoranas, but uh, and I'll we'll be talking about Majoranas on, on these uh, indium antimonide nanowires uh, with induced superconductivity. But that, well, that that audience didn't need that that motivation since the the session was on on essentially on on nanowires, right? So the technology. But I think here is important to to motivate. Uh, that even though you have these platforms and, and you have you know signatures of something that could be called Majorana, there's also been a lot of um, skepticism in, in a sense in the community, and that of course led to to some of the events that we saw in the past few weeks. For instance, uh, the retraction of the quantized Majorana conductance paper which turns out that you know these peaks uh the data here doesn't cannot be conclusive of whether these peaks are actually majoranas or they are induced by disorder and uh i talked this about about, about exactly this paper in another video i try to remember to put the link here but the point is that the community has has looked for other platforms where they they would see signatures that could be uh, linked to to topological states and in my arena bound states and one of them is this proposals of using magnetic chains deposited on superconducting surfaces where those could be probed not by a, a transport experiment into the wire or so but by probing with uh, an STM tip so it would be a much much more local probe so you can actually position the tip right on top of each of these atoms and see whether the density of states there is different than the other so that would characterize say a zero zero bias state so a mayor and a zero mode by a signature in this uh, uh, in this 
transmission from the surface to the tip or the conductance from the surface to the tip. And some of the early proposals actually involved some sort of magnetic structure, magnetic uh, helical order, or some, some people call it spiral order, along the magnetic atoms in the chain. So it would be each of these atoms has a magnetic moment. The next one is not completely aligned with the first one, but it is at, at a different angle. Some people call this a spiral angle. So and then this, of course, would move and making some some helix spin structure along the chain. Notice that the magnetic moment here is in plane. Okay, it's not out of plane. It's in plane. And uh, if you do the theory, for instance, in these cases, uh, this spiral angle is is a is a very important uh, element. So if this angle is non-zero, then it uh, you know, if you work out the theory for the magnetic, the magnetic uh, chain coupled to the superconducting surface here, you would get uh, an, a BDG Hamiltonian, which would be P wave, but only if beta is different than zero. So this sign of Ka here is a signature of P wave pairing, while this, just the delta zero, is just the usual S wave pairing. So we need this beta of theta to be different than zero to get P wave. However, uh, the actual experiment that was done uh, uh, perhaps a year after, after this, these proposals, uh, they had a chain of iron atoms which were ferromagnetic aligned. And how does something with a zero spiral angle, right, so ferromagnetic alignment, would produce a P-wave superconduct superconductor? And the key here is with the spin orbit, the strong spin orbit coupling in the superconductor itself. So they had to use a lead, which is, is a superconductor, but also has a strong spin orbit coupling. And then uh, they, they show the theory here in the, in the science paper, where you would have these bands of Sheba states. So Sheba states are essentially states that appear inside the gap of the superconductor whenever you have, say, a magnetic impurity. On, on, on the superconductor. And so you would have these polarized Shiba states, which depending on, on the parameters, would cross the Fermi energy on a, a odd number of points. And if you have you know, an odd number of pairs, actually, because you, you have crossings on both K and minus K, if you have an odd number of pairs, that would map into the original Kitaev uh, P wave super 1D P wave superconductor model, and then you would have Majorana bound states at the edge. So they would measure here at one, they'll, they'll see at a Majorana or a zero YSP, which they attributed to be Majorana, and then if you measure at two or three, there would be nothing. At four, you would have just the superconductor and the superconductor chain. Uh, yeah. And uh, moreover, there, there's been other experiments uh, trying to reproduce this. Uh, you know, there's also some some controversy here, but these systems are pretty much clean. But uh, there's this other experiment where they deposit bismuth, which has strong spin or coupling, on top of niobium, which is a BCS superconductor, and they they have this uh, uh, actual structure where you have these uh, uh, edge states. So this would be like a topological insulator and they, they, they put the, the iron cluster on top of that. So this is a paper that came out in September of 2019 which goes along the way of the proposal that we had uh, made in early 2019 in our first paper on, on this topic. So the our idea would go along this line. So, so let me uh, show you what would be our model here. So our model is we have a topological insulator, uh, namely here a K-Millet model on a honeycomb lattice. So we have the you know tight binding chain or tight binding model for a honeycomb lattice, such as like pretty much like graphene. But we also have this strong spin orbit coupling, which is in graphene is very small. So we need another another type of system. Uh, uh, where you would have an hexagonal lattice with one atom per, per site. 
uh, with strong spin arbor coupling that would realize the king melee model that would have then these edge states uh, like a topological insulator, a 2D topological insulator. And then we have induced superconductivity on that. So this is all sitting on a superconductor. And we'd have these magnetic impurities on top of it. So that's what's represented here. So you might have uh, this spiral angle. And the spiral angle is actually a parameter for us. We model these magnetic impurities as a collection of single impurities with a magnetic moment that is induced by a Zeeman coupling on site for each of or well this is this even coupling for for all is equal to for all of them so the effective magnetic moment would be the same what would not be the same is the angle right so the, the direction of the magnetic moment could be different so the two parameters that i'm going to focus on on the rest of the talk are the the zeeman coupling and the chemical potential right so we're going to do phase diagrams out of these two parameters so this is uh, the, the key ingredients of the model. And there's another ingredient that can be, uh, in, which is, turns out to be very important, which is how we calculate the superconducting gap. So as it turns out, we do, we do not set the superconducting gap to a constant, but we actually calculate it self-consistently, meaning that uh, uh, we start with the eigenvectors that had a Newtonian and an initial guess for the the order parameter and we calculate this right so we calculate this expected value of ci where i is the side of each chain uh, ci up ci down expected value given the eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian get then a new uh, order parameter which is going to be dependent on 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 the position on which site you're 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 considering and then you redo the calculation until we converge for all sites so this turns out to be important because then this the the final order parameter that you get will depend not only on the parameters of h say the chemical potential and the zeeman field and and all else, but also on the position, depending on whether you have, say, an edge state or not. And also depend on the, on the spiral angle, uh, if you're, you know, calculating here the, uh, the gap at the position of these magnetic sites. Now, how we characterize whether the system is, is in a topological phase or not, we calculate this Majorana number uh, by Using uh, periodic boundary conditions, we then calculate the Fafian. This is a little bit technical on how you do that, but this is a topological invariant. It's been known in the literature. And this will give me a number, right? Typically, plus one if this is uh, trivial and minus one if this is topological. And that's uh, how we characterize our, our phases or phase diagram. So this is an example that was... Uh, published in this earlier paper from also Rafael and, and my other coll collaborators uh, in early 2019 where you have the the magnetic moments uh, sitting in the middle of the topological insulators well away from the edge and here we have the phase diagram as a function of the, the Zeeman splitting and the chemical potential so if I cut a line here uh, uh, what I would have, I would go from the white region, which is trivial, m equals plus 1, to the gray region, where you have m equals minus 1. And at these lines, what happens is that the gap closes and opens again. So let's take a look, for instance, here. This is with periodic boundary conditions. The, the gap closes, and then you have the, the topological region in gray, and then it opens again. Now, if I do open, open boundary conditions, then I have a similar spectrum with the gap closing and opening again. But here I do have low-lying states, zero energy or near zero energy states. They uh, actually have the splittings, which it comes from the finite size uh, of the chain, so that the, the two states at the at ends actually overlap and then you have the splitting in energy. But as we make the chain longer, the splitting decreases exponentially. 
and that's a signature of the exponential localization of these Majorana bound states at the edges of the magnetic chain. So, okay, we have the Majoranas in the system when we have the chain in the middle of the topological insulator. Now, uh, w one more point is that this is for theta equals zero. So this is fair magnetic alignment for the chain. So in our case, uh, we do have the presence of Majorana states even for the ferromagnetic case, which agrees then with the second interpretation for those experiments that I showed. And this is something I, I didn't stress in the, in the talk, but we are more into this, uh, into this uh, regime here, where we have Shiba bands, and the, the, the closing of the Shiba bands actually mark the, the onset of the topological region, okay? So, the, yeah, this is an important point that I, I think I didn't stress enough in the, in the March meeting talk. Now I have more time, I can stress it. So, even at theta equals zero, we, ha we have these Majorana states. And now, what happens if I move the chain towards the edge? And that's the main point of this paper. And the point here is that there's the, the behavior is actually very different. First, the phase diagram becomes different. Uh, this is a phase diagram that I showed you before with the magnetic chains on, on the middle of the topological insulator and this is a phase diagram with the, the, the chain at the zigzag edge here, right? So uh, here is uh, the, you, you notice that this upper boundary here when the, the gap reopens, right, is pretty much similar for all the all cases so it's more related with say bulk kind of uh, states uh, touching and reopening the gap now the lower boundary where the gap closes for the first time this actually changes a lot as you move the the chain towards the edge and in fact it becomes almost vertical almost independent of VZ and enlarges the topological area that you have it at your disposal for TT equals zero quite a bit. And it turns out that if you take a look at where do those states are coming from, they are essentially coming from the Shiba bands. And you can probe that by taking a single magnetic atom and put it at the, at the, at here, at the edge. And then you calculate you know what what happens to the to the subgap states and then of course for a single magnetic atom this is well known this is the the Yuznov Shiba uh U Shiba Rusnov states or Shiba states that uh will will appear below the the, the gap edge and actually will cross the Fermi energy at some point depending on say here the chemical potential for instance and that's the crossing that crossing point is precisely this red line. So Yushi Baruznov states are actually contributing or their bands when, once you have a chain is actually contributing to this lower uh, edge uh, boundary. Now uh, here's another slide that I didn't include in the presentation. What, what if you have helical order, not only for magnetic alignment, but helical order? Do you, see, do you still see Majoranas? And the answer is yes, but the, di the phase diagrams are quite different. So you have here one of the borders or the boundaries is pretty much the same, but the other boundary it starts behaving, you know, uh, in some weird way, and actually crosses over into this other boundary. So you, you might have some some regions where, for this chemical potential, for instance, you don't have any. Um, topological phase and so because these these boundaries cross and so it's interesting that now of course this lower boundary still has some I mean here is, is hard to call them Shiba states because you have these helix structures so this is definitely more complicated but the point is that uh, they are still Shiba like bands right so but but then they, they cross over to, to the other bulk like uh, edge states 
and you have these funny features for the 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 phase diagrams but now let's go back to the the ferromagnetic case t equals zero and then we we we're going to see what happens to the spectrum as we move the the chain from the middle to the edge and as we saw that uh, the lower value of vz actually uh, for the boundary where the gap first closes actually diminishes right so that's what we see here for instance right this for a given mu i think it there in that figure we're using 0.4 this value actually decreases to lower values of vz so that's essentially what we're looking at here and moreover the size of the gap increases and that means that the myodana the these oscillations or these uh, little splittings in the myodana energy states they actually decrease for the same length right so the, this is the same chain same length i think this is 20 sites or something and then I, we just move it to to the edge you get a better myorana state with much less oscillations here right uh, a large gap and that's essentially so it's crucial here to calculate the gap self-consistently because then the superconducting gap will actually would depend on where you're sitting right and more importantly you can actually measure or you know do a quality measure for how better these myodana states become when once you move it from the center to the edge by calculating something called the myodana polarization so i didn't during the march meeting talk I didn't have time to explain much of that but let's see if i can say a, a few more words about this uh here you're summing over sites of only half of the system right and you are calculating the you know you solve the Bogolyubov the Gen equation numerically and you have these contributions from electron like and hole like and uh, with with uh, a spin polarization up or down now if you have u equals to v that's what you get a Majorana and then yeah there's this factor of two but you have a Majorana uh, with uh, you want u and v at, at, at the sites where the myodon is localized uh, j to be equal and and polarized so when, when when that happens it turns out that if you do this addition and if you have a perfect polarized myodon sitting on a say a single site you would get close to one this uh to would be close to one now if you have something that is not a myodon say is a grave bound state which is more hole like or electron like say one of them is one of these v zeros right so if it's purely hole like or purely electron like and u or v is zero for every side then you get zero right so that that's a completely non myodana case and you might have something in between say myodanas which are coupled to each other so they don't have a spin polar well-defined spin polarization and, and whatnot and that's usually the case here for for these states like these ones you get yeah they're you know they're myoranas but they're they're overlapping sort of the kind of crappy myoranas and then you come here and you calculate their myorana polarization you get what 60 percent yeah about that and then you'll say okay let's increase the chain length right to get better myorana polarization that's what you get here you get maybe 280 percent now the point is that if i take this 20 side chain and move it to the edge you already get 100 near 100 percent myodana polarization at the topological region right just like that right and of course it decays out of the topological region and there's some features here but i think this this is the, the important point here to drive home you get enhanced quality myodana bound states when you move the 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 chain to the to the edge of the topological insulator and this is the main uh, point of the paper okay so this is the summary so we show that you have myoid unbound states of the end of magnetic chains chains when they're placed on top of a topological insulator with induced superconductivity and as you move the chains from the center to the edge you have an improved localization of the myoid unbound states uh, essentially shown by the decrease in these uh 
splittings, these energy splittings for the myelinandins. And it also, you have an improved quality of the myelin bound states as measured by the myelinandin polarization. Um, these are the two references. This one, we said the phase diagrams for this case. And the, in this one, we studied uh, the effect of moving the, the chain to the, to the edge. And as I promised in the March meeting, uh, this talk is now available also on YouTube. So thank you for your attention. And these are the grant numbers. Okay. Thank you. And I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.